All right, my friends, just got back. We just got done watching a Danielle Kunkel Roberts over at Boomer Benefits uh, video on Plan N, Medicare, Medigap Plan N versus Medigap Plan G. Look, I am not in Medigap expert by whatsoever at all. Uh, J.O. up in the north in Michigan, but he covers every state that I'm aware of. I know down here. And then Danielle's in Texas, so I got my bases covered for sure. And I would talk to one of those guys if I were you, without question. I don't get paid. I don't get anything from these guys. I just know that there's no way just the average Joe can know anything about Medicare. And there's no way your financial planner can know that much about it either. But here's the way I, I break it down. Look, <laughs> this is just your old buddy Josh. <laughs> All right, so just be advised. Take this for what it's worth. I don't see how you can go plan in if you can get plan g if it's only you know 20 or 30 bucks a month less or more plan g um danielle talked about the excess charges of uh of doctors of medicare and she said make sure you ask about medic medicare assignment for those of us that don't, I, you know my goodness i mean i love danielle i think she's fantastic what the hell does medicare assignment mean i mean she didn't really explain it but but i will basically does that allow does a provider do they accept Medicare's covered charges? If not, that means, it seems to me, that they can charge up to 15% more than what Medicare allows. Does that make sense? And it doesn't have to be approved. So if they do not accept Medicare assignment, they can tack on their own charge of, of up to 15% of what Medicare allows without having to go with anything. And that could be a lot of money. And then Danielle's talking about all the different co-pays and all that stuff that come with Plan N, whereas Plan uh, Plan G is just a $185 annual deductible. That's it. And then Plan N has all this other stuff, so they can kind of, you know, just chop you up a little bit with little slices and dices. And then on top of that, the 15% uh, Plan B excess charges. And look, man, I'm just learning all this myself. I mean, and I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but if I don't know this, I, I can't imagine that you would. Why would you? Well, who wants to know this crap? Oh, yeah, yeah. But here's the way I look at it. If you go on Medicare Plan G, and later you want to switch out to Plan uh, a Plan N, and later you want to switch out to Plan G, and Daniel will give an example of that, of people get sick of paying the, uh, you know, paying the bells and whistles stuff, you know, the, the, the excess service charge, all this crap. They just don't want to deal with it, and they're willing to pay a couple, 30 bucks a month more uh, for Plan G, so they don't have to worry about all that crap. Yeah, I think it's my understanding. You still got to get underwritten. Anytime you're going from one Medigap plan to another or one Medicare Advantage plan to another, you still got to go through underwriting. And so if you got to go through underwriting, um, you, you might get declined. And if you get declined, you're SOL. You're stuck. You're stuck with what you got. So the, here's what I'm going to do. Now, I mean, I'm 49, so that's, what, 16 years away from being the big 6'5". Um, but I'm going plan... I'm going whatever is the simplest, as long as I can afford it. Like my man Jay says, he goes, look, you know, don't don't sacrifice food so you have a Medigap Plan uh, G. Uh, but uh, I'm going Plan G because Plan F will be gone by then, at least for new enrollees. As of 2020, there's no more Plan F. But I'm going Plan G. I want it as simple as possible. I don't want the Medicare excess charge, which can be pretty significant, as I talked the last time, too. It not only can be pretty significant, I imagine it's going to even be more so because... Uh, of how they're going to have to uh, reduce the cost of Medicare to keep it solvent. Um, and the way they do it is reduce the, 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 what they pay to doctors and hospitals. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not saying you, I have no clue what your circumstance is. Do not take this as, as uh, advice. Take this as knowledge to say, you know something, I want to talk to somebody because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. This guy, Josh, he told me he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, but he knows enough to make me wonder, am I doing it right? Um, I, I just, I don't see how, I mean, okay, I, I, I get not being an expert. I don't see, for me, this kind of goes back to the whole thing on taxation as well. Uh, I'd rather pay the IRS a couple extra hundred bucks and be done with them than pay them than try to work for, you know, freaking 40 hours to save 20, 200 bucks in taxes. And for me, it's just not worth my time. My time is more valuable than that. Trying to keep up with uh, freaking $185 co-pays or whatever that they got, other co-pays, well, for Medicare plan N, it's just not worth it. Trying to follow through on Medicare Advantage plans because it changes every year. I, I don't want to do any of that crap. I want, you know, I want to be out in the garden, man. You know what I'm saying? I want to be with my grandkids. I don't want to be doing any of that crap. 
but Josh will save 50 bucks a month and 50 bucks a month according to whoever is a million dollars when you retire well that, that's uh consider that my time is worth more than 50 dollars a month if that makes sense so yeah, we hope this helps again for me it's going to be planned g uh plan g or bust um, as we say here today now again i might be a popper when i'm 62 years old maybe if my wife have left me i'm sitting in a freaking you know a bucket you know what i'm saying with those uh, barrels like the old poor people in the old shows i put a little top hat on a barrel i'm like help me uh, we'll gladly pay you tuesday for a hamburger today i might be that guy from popeye remember that guy uh, living down i won't even be in a van under the water by the bridge i'll be just in my little barrel and I use that half the time to walk around because I got no pants on. And the other half, I freaking throw my firewood in there to to, uh, to stay warm at night. That easily could be me. If that's the case, I won't be on either Medigap, Plan G, or Plan uh, N. I'll be on freaking Medicare Advantage. But uh, as long as I'm sitting here today with a cash flow I can afford, 100 bucks or 120 bucks a month or whatever it is, uh, more, 120 bucks a month, and you know, which is about 20 or $30 more a month for Plan G, I'm going that route. So something to think about. Either way, go see a broker, not a captive agent. Go see a broker. Go see a broker. All right, do that, please, because this is a big flipping deal. This is so much more important than uh, if you have Vanguard or Fidelity index funds, for instance. All right, we'll see you.